one does not simply walk into Mordor. The Land of Shadow. Hey, welcome everybody. In today's Shadowcast, we are going to be excavating buried treasure in the Library of Shadow. Um, I'll begin with a lore video about this ancient collection of scrolls, maps, and books, and then close with an expl explanation of what the Library of Shadow is and why I invented it as part of the expanded mythology of Middle-earth here in the Land of Shadow. I also wanted to take a moment uh, and mention the passing of Barry Humphreys, uh, who was a comedian, actor, and satirist who played the Great Goblin in The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey with Wit, Humor, and Panache. Uh, he was 89 years young and was working right up until the moment of his passing. And as the Great Goblin would say, well, that'll do it. So, let's grab a shovel and a treasure map so we can dig deep and discover what lay within the Library of Shadow. Year one of the Fourth Age, following the War of the Ring and the fall of Sauron, King Elisar sent emissaries into Mordor to destroy all that remained of the works of the Dark Lord. Towers and fortresses, orc holds and armories, anything left standing after the ruin wrought by the destruction of the One Ring was leveled and torn to the ground. For many years this work continued until nothing remained, there were some, however, among the men of Gondor who were enamored of Sauron's engines of war and even his use of Morgul sorcery. They believed that Gondor would be made stronger by the study of these dark arts. In secret, a select few gathered what they could and kept the artifacts in hiding. After King Elisar withdrew his forces from Mordor to work on the rebuilding of Asgiliath, these seekers of knowledge combed through the valley of Gorgoroth in search of anything that remained. In the year 25 of the Fourth Age, they struck gold. East of what had once been the dark tower of Baradur, an iron door embedded in the rock was found in a deep defile. Upon opening this secret doorway, they discovered a staircase that led down into a hidden chamber, a library filled with maps, scrolls, and diagrams detailing the plans and strategies of war. There were meticulous records of how the vast city within the Dark Tower was governed. They also discovered an ancient book filled with Morgul spells, written in the Black Speech. They named it the Book of Fire. Sauron understood the terrible cost of defeat. After the ring was cut from his hand, and he fled into the east, all of his works were destroyed by the surviving army of the last alliance of men and elves at the close of the Second Age. When Sauron rose once again and began the rebuilding of the Dark Tower in the Third Age, he prepared in secret a hidden vault and stored within it a vast portion of his accumulated knowledge. If he suffered another defeat, all would not be lost. It was this vault 
that contained Sauron's vast store of knowledge that was found east of the ruins of Barad-dûr. Countless scribes enslaved by Sauron had worked tirelessly for years to duplicate thousands of books, scrolls, and maps stored in the Dark Tower. These were taken in secret to the hidden vault for safekeeping, and so it was that much of the knowledge of Mordor survived into the Fourth Age of Middle-earth. The Inspiration for the Library of Shadow Sometime between 2005 and 2007, the idea for the Library of Shadow came to me. It was first introduced with what I called Mordor 4.0, which premiered online in 2010. I created it as a storytelling device to expand upon the mythology of Middle-earth and in particular the story of Mordor. Most of the new content coming out of the Library of Shadow falls under the category of the expanded mythology of Middle-earth rather than Tolkien canon, but not all. Tolkien was a prolific writer, but not so much a closer of his written works. Tolkien would begin new writings about the same events, altering the many stories through the ages of Middle-earth, creating a sometimes confusing and contradictory history. These can be found in the Unfinished Tales of Numenor and Middle-earth, published by Christopher Tolkien. So, some of Tolkien's alternate histories come through our Library of Shadow. However, for the most part, I conceive this storytelling construct mainly as a way to add new content and fill in the vague knowledge we have about Mordor. I use this to explain the existence of our version of the Black Speech pages and to explore what lay within the fortresses and orc holds within Mordor, especially the Tower of Barad-dûr. I have also expanded on other dark places and creatures in Middle-earth with this storytelling idea. When creating any new content or story, I make sure to stay within the strict fictional boundaries created by Professor Tolkien. I also like to play with the idea that the discovery of the Library of Shadow was a seed that would lead the men of Gondor into evil during the Fourth Age of Middle-earth. In Tolkien's abandoned sequel to The Lord of the Rings, entitled The New Shadow, a rising evil grows in Gondor about 100 years into the Fourth Age. Tolkien's discarded tale is about men who grew restless in prosperity and peace, seeking the forbidden knowledge of Sauron. I like to think that the manuscripts, scrolls, and books found in the Library of Shadow detailing Morgul sorcery were perhaps kept hidden by a select few, who would begin to infect the fourth age of Middle-earth with a renewed worship of the dark powers. A legacy, perhaps, that Sauron would find pleasing. During the Third Age, in the time of Sauron, this secret chamber could only be opened by speaking a Morgul spell in the black speech of unlocking. It is believed that Sauron, who was wise beyond count and weighed all things to a nicety upon the scales of his malice, built this underground labyrinth of chambers far from the center of his power for a reason. If his assault upon Middle-earth should fail once again, then a great portion of his knowledge would be saved from destruction. In this vast labyrinth of chambers below the secret veil, 
The Dark Lord had countless scribes writing in the black speech, with crabmine quills and crimson inks upon dark papyrus. They recorded the histories of the first Dark Lord, Morgoth, and his favored servant, Sauron. The fall of Morgoth and the rise of Sauron are said to be recorded in great depth. The making of the rings of power and the dark rites used in their forging were also described in great detail. Much of the knowledge of Mordor was kept in this secret hidden library of shadow, and much of that knowledge was saved after the fall of Mordor. Well, that wraps up today's Shadowcast. I hope you found this exploration of the Library of Shadow and its purpose here in Mordor to be entertaining and informative. So, until next time, I hope to find you in the Goblin Tunnels deep underneath the Misty Mountains.